us the world over this is the first ever episode for on journalism is not a crime where we are coming to all of Zimbabwe and the people across the world uh, we are having a digital protest what we have actually termed the 30 day uh, digital protest as journalists are coming together across uh, Zimbabwe to say that the media sector is under attack we are under attack as various uh, journalists and various media uh, fraternities today we are going to be having a very interesting conversation with many people that we have today but uh, quickly, uh, from where we are right now, I am live from the Zog studio, Cadets of Tech Make TV, of course. But we are so much excited to have my co-host right beside me uh, is the editor with Zim Daily as well. That's uh, Yvonne uh, with me. Uh, Yvonne, uh, thank you so much and uh, welcome to this show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on show. It's exciting because what we are trying to do is to raise an awareness. The biggest challenge that we face today is that journalists are under attack the media fraternity is under attack there are so many things that we just need to put into perspective because what we are seeing is a continued assault on the profession now why are we journalists and why did we choose to get ourselves onto this path if there was no um if there was no need for the fraternity to function so, Tonio, it's exciting to be here, especially in this season where globally journalists are under attack. Mm -hmm. And of course, much more interestingly, uh, today we are going to be having a guest, a very special guest. Uh, but before we just go to our guest, uh, also on the panel, we have a panelist as well who has a very strong passion and interest in media, media ethics, media standards. I personally invited him because we always talk about media standards, ethics, and I know we've been having lots of conversations across as, as far as media is concerned. We are so much excited to have uh, Mr. Maweri joining us live from South Africa just before we go, uh, we get to introduce you guys, our uh, special guest for this first episode. Mr. Maweri, thank you so much for joining us. No, thanks. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, okay. Uh, that's, that's Mr. Mtunga Maweri today joining us uh, from South Africa as part of the panelists where we are going to be having this discussion. And of course, last but not least, uh, is the man that we are going to be all talking to today, having a strong conversation. He has made headlines across Zimbabwe. I think for the past few months, he's been in our headlines, uh, breaking different stories 
I, I know the biggest story has been the drug story, yeah. and we also have been talking about the, the abduction of his brother. And of course, uh, unfortunately, we also witness uh, the police officers now saying he's also now under arrest. Uh, yeah. But this, this is a very seasoned journalist who has been doing a lot in the media. I, I do not need to preempt him. And welcome. Thank you so much for having us. I'm Mr. Mdudus Matutu, the Zim Life editor. Thanks, Tony. Um, I'm really grateful to be here. Thank you. Finally, we are here. I know we, we had uh, serious power cut issues, uh, delays, but we are here. We are glad to be here. Uh, I'll shoot this question to you straight uh, so that it just kicks up into our show. Uh, Mr. Matutu, uh, I know currently you, you've been under serious attacks as a journalist, and uh, there have been a lot of things that the media has been talking about. One of the latest issues is the issue of your brother, who is also a media student, so to say, mm. uh, your, your cousin, um, um, Tawanda Mchichiwa. Uh, and uh, you have been posting and talking a lot about what has been happening, what has been transpiring. If, um, if you can just let us know, how is, how is your cousin Tawanda Mchichiwa? Uh, thanks. Uh, you know, it's a small correction. It's, um, what I'm having um, an echo. We're having an echo. Okay, I, I think the crew behind the scenes will try and help us out with that with that echo issue. Ah, sure. Yeah, yeah, please if you can just work on the on the echo issue because these guys are saying that they're having an echo. But uh maybe you can okay, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, my so, so I was just going to say that uh, by the way it's uh, it's my nephew. Um, okay. That's fine. Um, as you probably know by now, uh, Tawanda went through uh, some very serious and traumatic uh, experience at the hands of people that we have, uh, I believe, uh, now certainly established were acting on behalf of the state. Um, and he has been obviously uh, seriously wounded. So he has suffered some medical complications as a result of uh, uh, the, the torture that he went through over two days. That he was uh, sedated when he was uh, abducted uh, in broad daylight in Dwarf. So uh, he has been um, going for dialysis to try and resolve some issues with his uh, pain and so much. Uh, so um, he's been undergoing some. Uh, Also, of course, the most important part of is in the, in the mental hospital field. Uh, we have been undergoing quite uh, uh, some uh, serious uh, counseling uh, because uh, I think the biggest damage, the greatest damage uh, that these people managed to do was to uh, damage his uh, mental, uh, mental health. So. I see it as well with, uh, let us say, Joanna Mumbe. I see it in others, and uh, of course, uh, they are accused of uh, faking these things. But I've seen Joanna uh, out there as well, and I just know what uh, sort of impact um, these sort of things uh, can have uh, uh, on someone. And um, we're just glad that uh, we have Joanna uh, in one piece. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, as a family, we are more interested in, in justice. And that's what we have been uh, actively fighting for. Um, and it's connected to that, of course, uh, while we're fighting for justice, uh, we know that uh, one of the biggest uh, cri you know, connected crime scenes to all this is the Impala car rental uh, company in Harare, uh, who have gone to the high court, uh, got an order to uh, go to Impala and uh, cover some certain documents. Information uh, indicating where this car that they abducted the went. And those rumors from the report. Because it, Impala is refused to cooperate. And um, uh, as part of that, 
they were called the police who protect them and uh, this is regarded as arrest of uh, more students. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Duduzi, for giving us that. Uh, you know, it's actually horrifying to to understand some of these things that are happening to people, and the the media or Peace. state media has been telling us that these are fake abductions, etc. So um, when you give us such a, a, a sad graphical illustration, it's really disturbing, especially to uh, young journalists who are growing and who are developing and trying to build a skill um, you know, in our country. So um, uh, Dudu, I think maybe you can also share with us a little bit about why you are on the wanted list by the police, have you have you been privy of what they really are looking for, um, you know, and, and, and why? Maybe the question is, is this still on the one at least? Because I know yeah. this happened uh, towards the uh, 31st of July, uh, of July movement, uh, where we heard that you, the, the police were now looking for you uh, before they started doing a collateral damage, uh, arresting your, your, your cousin. Are you still on police wanted list, and uh, what are the prayer? Uh, what are the charges that they're preferring against you? Uh, well, uh, on the same day that uh, they attacked Rwanda, they also left my two nephews and also my sister. Uh, they, uh, they then came to the to us. Uh, they were armed with the warrant, uh, which they signed was the sister was not present and this uh, particular uh, flyer was uh, found, okay. you know. Um, anyway, they obviously took what they took. Um, they uh, wanted me to come to the police station. Um, they haven't told us what the, what the charge is. Um, but uh, for me, it was really never about uh, July 31. It was never about uh, any subversive materials. The only subversive uh, items they wanted was my laptop and my phone, because they believe that uh, they, they will find uh, my sources for particular information that uh, we have put out in life. This includes um, the, the work that we did on the drugs corruption scandal. Also, uh, the, you know, even now they have a bigger incentive to find me because they are very keen uh, to understand how we got that CCTV footage that has uh, caused them quite um, a lot of headaches because for the first time we've uh, been able to uh, place them at the scene of a uh, abduction and we've been able to prove that uh, the state is actually responsible for, for the ongoing abduction of uh, human rights uh, activists, journalists, comedians, uh, and all other people who have been uh, victims of the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. And what does that really, when you look at all that you have said in Duduzi, what does that tell you about the state of our media um, at the present moment? Are journalists really free to express themselves and again, they really uh, interrogate the issues that are happening and uh, um, you know, fully to investigate fully because one of our major responsibility as a fraternity is to keep our publics informed. But uh, with the, such things happening, do you think that uh, 
more journalists are going to be bold enough to step out and actually get the right information to the people, or this is a way of coercing uh, the fraternity so that we don't talk about those things? Well, I think uh, it's a very alarming thing that's happening, uh, the targeting of journalists. I remember the other day I was checking with uh, uh, the Zimbabwe Union of uh, Journalists. Mm -hmm. How many journalists have been arrested uh, or have been involved in some incident with police or some elements of the security start since yeah. the start of the year? And uh, I was informed that it's about 30. Uh, I don't know any place in the world, even in the world, where journalists have been targeted in such a systematic uh, way. Than in the map, and it tells you that there's uh, something really wrong uh, about, uh, about how the government here is uh, dealing with uh, its citizens. Um, and what's particularly real, I mean, for me, uh, watching those scenes uh, uh, from Impala current or the other day, where uh, some goons uh, who have not identified themselves as police or anything yeah. uh, can pounce on um, a group of students lawfully and peacefully addressing the news conference, yeah. target journalists, uh, destroy their equipment, steal their phones, and the police are watching, and mm -hmm. uh, uniformed police as it, as it, uh, are watching, uh, and they are only waiting uh, that uh, when these men are finished uh, doing this, uh, their terrible business, then they pick up uh, the student leader and uh, take him to jail. Uh, um, that is not too clear to me uh, we speak. So that uh, incident, the, the way they went about it, the brazenness of it, uh, I think would be alarming to any journalist, young or old, uh, who would be wondering what the hell is going on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Jose. I yeah. think. I, I just need to understand uh, the, the latest attacks that have been coming to you as an, as an individual. Uh, would you would you think that these issues could be separate from the uh, the popular story on the drugs gate? Do you think that the drugs gate probably is the reason why you are a target? Because they are not really saying even from what you are telling us uh, as far as uh, the police uh, docket is saying the crimes that you are charging on. Do, do do you think that the reason that they, they could be targeting you is because of the drugs gate uh, issue that you have been exposing? Well, I've uh, I've no doubt whatsoever. And I'm also quite sure uh, that uh, these things are these uh, uh, events around myself uh, are being directed by uh, Mr. Dennis Mbuaya and his uh, associates in the Nunavut family um, because he has been, uh, you know, uh, when we it was in live that uh, first reported on this uh, drugs uh, uh, corruption. Um, and I, had, um, I think at the time, why I was uh, able to speak to us, and he was trying to really kill the story. Uh, he didn't want to, to cooperate, uh, he didn't want to be quoted saying this or that, but he just uh, uh, came across as, uh, you know, when I read uh, what he has been up to, uh, you know, how he even comes into the public spotlight. First uh, coming is uh, some growing up, I believe, in Kaloma coming to Harare, joining the police uh, constabulary, and then posing as a police officer, posing as a CIO, uh, making friends in high places, uh, being a law under himself, and being just very powerful. Uh, I just knew that I uh, was dealing with uh, quite a sophisticated individual. Uh, but what has happened after the exposure of that corruption is that uh, we uh, have uh, literally cost Mr. Nguaya and his associates um, 60 million dollars in the cancelled uh, uh, tenders that they've been given unprocedurally and lawfully. Uh, and I think that uh, if I were to cost you 60 million dollars, you would not be very happy with me. And uh, I think that's uh, the case with Mbuai. So what we've seen is that uh, they've come after everyone who was connected to that story, by the way. Uh, you see it in, uh, in Hopewell. Uh, was quite uh, very active in uh, pushing the, uh, the story on Twitter. Uh, they've uh, he has spent uh, I believe 42 days in prison, 
uh, they have come up to, um, uh, myself uh, um, in my family uh, they've gone after the police officers who actually investigated this uh, this whole stuff mm -hmm. uh, in fact the I, I believe the biggest piece in terms of the drug story was uh, the intervention by Interpol uh, I believe that if we didn't have that intervention by Interpol maybe the story would have, uh, would have died but um, uh, Interpol wrote a letter to Z, uh, ZRP uh, saying that we have found this uh, mysterious uh, deposit made by the Zimbabwe government through an account in, in Hungary. Can we please have an explanation about uh, this money and, and so forth? Uh, we have frozen it and, and, and so on. So the police officer in the ZRP uh, who was assigned this, uh, this was a, a sup, uh, sup, sup, superintendent, I believe is uh, Nyachega or something. Um, he wrote to intend, he writes to the finance ministry demanding to know how Zach was, uh, sorry, uh, Rax, uh, the company of uh, Mr. Delish Mbuaya, was appointed uh, uh, for those tenders and uh, you know, why that money was paid and, and so on. So Mr. Nyachega is now um, a good person, a good of. Uh, uh, corruption, I believe, something like that, coming from some two years ago. Yeah. And then the guy who applied the handcuffs on Mr. On Mr. Nguaya, he's a, he's a, he's a senior cop called Odeilo Moyo, I believe. Uh, he has been arrested, accused of uh, uh, corruption over housing stands or something like that. Um, and then uh, just just yesterday, with the CID uh, director, the top guy in CID, uh, who approved uh, the arrest of uh, Mr. Nguai. Uh, he was arrested yesterday. He's accused of uh, corruption from a few years ago, I believe. Something to do with uh, uh, protecting, I think, uh, uh, um, or something like that. And, um, of course, the key uh, also, I, can, I might add as well, that there was a guy at the ZPC, uh, Gilbert uh, Nimbao, he, uh, you know, the story is quite a threat. He initially had been this clip of uh, Mr. Nguaya dealing with the uh, talking to Mr. Nanga, who are saying is donating. In fact, this whole 60 million thing was first uh, uh, presented as a donation by Mr. Nguaya to Mr. Okay. To the President of Zimbabwe for COVID 19 effort. And in fact, that's where really I got interested in Mr. Nguaya, who donates uh, 60 million of his own money to, to a government. So when the more I read about Mr. Nguaya, the more I knew that this guy is fun. There's no, uh, there's no story. There's something bigger here happening. And that's where the whole kicks off. People at ZBC, it uh, looks like they saw this uh, and they were uh, quite concerned about um, about the story themselves. It didn't sound right that uh, this guy can be donating 60 million to the president. Uh, or to, to, to the government. And then they held that story. They didn't uh, put it up. Um, and then uh, I believe Mr. Nguaya was very unhappy uh, about that particular uh, actual call by the, by the ZPC. He then um, uh, got a camera person who was uh, there when the um, so called donation was made. Uh, he made the camera person. Um, uh, run the item on a weekend when the editors, most of the editors are away and uh, you know, perhaps the, uh, the editorial decisions are much easier to implement. So he managed to get that clip to run on that weekend. So with uh, this uh, funny situation, uh, sometime when uh, Nick Mangwana was uh, on, on Twitter, very sure that ZPC never ran that clip uh, until somebody then just pulled it and said, oh, Chief, uh, check this thing. And then it was Nick Mangwana uh, who then um, said, well, we'll look into this thing, because uh, and then he came back to report that uh, named camera person, he named the guy, uh, had done this thing without uh, approval and so forth. And uh, So they suspended that guy. After uh, the fellow is suspended, it looks like he then uh, pulled his own uh, strings, and then he put in touch with the first lady, Oxilia Mnanga. Uh, and the next thing, uh, Gilbert was summoned by uh, Oxilia. Uh, and, uh, um, I believe, 
Uh, the information I, I, I have or I've been told is that uh, the meeting lasted almost an hour in a room full of uh, people, about 20 people, uh, oh. including the first lady. But it was her mainly leading the charge and uh, uh, just going after, after journalists and, and so forth. And in no time, uh, the number who uh, is removed uh, from uh, his position as head of news and uh, he's uh, given some other, uh, you know, sideways, I think, just given some other job that uh, no one uh, no one wants really. But uh, it just shows you the link between Mr. Uh, sorry, between uh, Delish McGuire, the president's wife, and mm -hmm. of course we know that there's a link here between uh, uh, Delish and the, uh, the president's uh, twin sons, Sean and, uh, and Collins. So it's, um, it's a story that has caused quite uh, a lot of people uh, uh, significant uh, uh, amounts of uh, comfort, uh, resources, and uh, yeah, and we just uh, we just to know where these people are going to stop. Yeah. So 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 now it it, it looks like you uh, it's a it's it's a it's a skeleton. Uh, it's, it's a cupboard full of skeleton that has just been opened, and now guns are all out, and. Uh, I'm sure we can we can all agree that instead of now having new concerted efforts into making sure that those who have been exposed are arrested, the whole system is turning around now. Yeah. They're but now saying, can... okay, but who is exposing us? Yeah. Now let's go against the system that is exposing us. So now they are now shooting uh, the, the the messenger and mm. uh, completely forgetting uh, the message. Uh, Mr. Tumumawe, I, I need you to just weigh in the. Uh, on, 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 on the role of uh, ethics and, and how political I know I know you have been you have been in the politics you have been in the, having a strong interest with the media uh, faced with such a situation and this is what we are seeing happening in Zimbabwe and I know you've been listening closely to what Matut was saying there you your take over that issue yeah maybe we can start with uh, the dispute there's a profession of journalists and there is a dispute as to whether corruption exists or doesn't exist and whether this profession is a bridge to what needs to be known and are people being informed educated and entertained by these stories all the journalists themselves are doing the job that they need to do to be able to get the public to know better. And uh, I was asking a question uh, to Matutu. Imagine it's midnight and you look up the stars, the shining stars of this profession. Who would it be just even three people who shine and these are the custodians or guardians of the profession, then we can be able to start there. If not, then we then I would then ask the next question. This is 40 years after independence. Do we have the men and women who will be the shining stars? In your own opinion, as an experienced uh, craftsman. Is that a question? Yeah, that's a question. Do you see anyone that you say, these are the shining stars? It's a tough question, uh, yeah. Mr. Moore, because I think uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm correct. You're asking me to tell you about the uh, media heroes. Is that it? Not heroes, icons like uh, Messi, Ronaldo. Or... Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> ooh, it's, um, I think everyone is doing a, a great job under very difficult uh, circumstances. Um, because the media industry, as I know it, um, is not a, a well paying profession. A lot of the bright people, I can tell you, of, um, uh, one of uh, my favorite writers, uh, Ranga Mbere, 
Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. he's left the profession to work in, uh, uh, in business. There are lots of fathers uh, uh, like him. Uh, we have left for the simple reason that the media industry is uh, uh, not uh, fulfilling um, a pursuit in Zimbabwe. So, and the journalists who are in the newsrooms are working for small pay. Uh, they don't have transport, they don't have uh, yeah. the tools that they need to uh, deliver um, good journalism. So, under those uh, very difficult circumstances, I would say that uh, that's the fact that uh, we are still here and we are able to report on uh, big stories that have consequences, uh, like uh, the, the arrest and the firing of the health minister. It's a testament that uh, there are still some, a lot of good work, a lot of good work, a lot of good things uh, that our profession is doing right. Yeah. What if somebody says a journalist, or what we call them, are also partisan. Yeah. They are not there to pursue the truth and nothing but the truth, but they come with folks mm -hmm. and they are mere front men for a deeper dispute which falls outside the four corners of the profession. Mm. Well, I think what you are calling a, a deeper dispute if I'm correct, is the political situation yeah. in Zimbabwe. Whether it's a crisis or a no crisis, mm. and I, the journalists, uh, they are coming clothed as journalists, mm. and many mm. of us are guilty of the same. Yeah, me, me. I remember in the 2000s, you said, uh, why don't you write yourself? I used to write yeah. a weekly column, and in a sense, uh, some people thought I was a journalist. I said, no, I'm not. Yeah. I'm just giving my personal opinion. But uh, then you recognize there was, there is a problem. Uh, mm. Mr. Mawere, maybe and I can come through the... they themselves either because of fear, because of uh, lack of standards, because of lack of uh, guardians. You find that uh, actually there is no standards. It's an animal farm. Well, <clears throat> I am sympathetic to, to, to your view, uh, but uh, I obviously have to, to disagree. I think, um, the, for instance, take your story of uh, SMM, um, which has been running for, for so long. Uh, if you were to assign a journalist to that story to say, okay, Chief, can you uh, bring us up to speed from the times who developed that? whenever that was uh, up to now you are taking uh, this guy has to look through a mountain of uh, paperwork he has to spend uh, a lot of uh, many hours on it and newsrooms are stretched uh, right now um, not uh, many newsrooms can actually afford uh, to take somebody away from the daily beat of uh, uh, the stories that I need to be published tomorrow which is uh, basically the story of the day so uh, if we are going to uh, dedicate uh, some resources, human resources, uh, to the big stories which require time and investigation and patience, um, we will probably need to fund our industry more. So uh, it's okay, it's quite easy to say that uh, the standards uh, are not there, uh, that uh, the profession is not uh, uh, painting itself in glory and so forth. But there are some serious uh, structural issues yeah. affecting the profession. And, and you know, the people are just not, uh, you see, uh, you, you, you brought in the issue of, uh, I think you called it uh, bias. Well, the journalists that we're talking about here uh, are going to leave the newsroom uh, this evening to any long view, uh, Zoom for view, very frustrating after a very long day at work. Uh, for small amounts of money. They are just like uh, your teachers, they are like your nurses. Uh, what the teachers are feeling, mm. the journalists are feeling. The, it's uh, how do you separate, how do you divorce your poverty? Uh, how do you divorce your poverty and then say, oh, I'm going to be uh, this uh, shining professional who's just going to, mm. uh, in the name of uh, fairness, uh, right things, what do you do? 
Then I I had uh, an opportunity of talking about the drugs matter with uh, Honorable Scala two days before he was arrested. Yeah. And uh, perhaps I should play that to you to see the real problem behind it. Even the political actors who are involved in terms of getting to grips with the facts of the matter. And I hope you can hear it so that uh, we can maybe get into it, whether it's a corruption matter or whether it's uh, something else, because uh, 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 let, uh, let, uh, let, let me just uh, uh, play it. Uh, it's on SoundCloud. Perhaps you can hear it. I think, uh, Mr. Mawere? Yes, Mr. Mawere, can you still hear me? Okay, I can hear you. Yes, uh, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure you got the point, but un unfortunately the quality is a bit... Okay. Uh, it's a bit uh, not very clear. Uh, some some of our viewers are actually commenting about the quality there, but I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure you you you, you have managed to yeah. put uh, the point across there. But yeah, and, uh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not so sure if uh, you are you are willing to respond just before we go for a short break. Then you can back up. Exchange. The facts, uh, Mr. Moira, are quite simple. Um, drugs 
uh, were not uh, drugs were not on the government um, uh, procurement uh, register. Uh, drugs has been favoured. They have been given contracts that they were not they were not uh, entitled to have. Uh, this uh, contract that they got when um, added up go uh, past uh, 60 million US dollars. Um, so, uh, how much of it has been paid? Uh, where the money is now and that sort of stuff um, is something I think that uh, the, the, the court charges against them will have to follow up. But otherwise, it's a very simple matter. Uh, drugs were not entitled to those uh, contracts and all. Well, and as well, add that uh, drugs have gone an inflated price. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, the, we, we know how drugs uh, got this, uh, this contract. Me and you. You know, just walk into the, uh, find, uh, sorry, the health minister today and say, uh, Comrade, uh, can you please sign off uh, not one, not two, but I think three contracts uh, for, for us to bring in uh, certain medicines. Yeah. It will just not work. Uh, and what's worse, they were flagged by, I'm told, the uh, security clearance uh, came saying, no, uh, don't do this uh, business with these people, they've got an outstanding. And uh, they still proceeded and gave them the contract. So I think uh, uh, from that context, it's very clear that uh, massive corruption has happened. And that corruption, if you trace it properly, it goes to the highest process in the land. So in terms of uh, your own assessment, uh, the financial prejudice to the government, what is the quantum according to your investigations? The, pay, the, the finance ministry has said that they paid the uh, drugs uh, $2 million for half a lot of uh, It was $2 million part of the $20 million, I think $18 million contract. So That's they were supposed right. to pay, yeah, that, and then they were supposed to pay, pay off that money by $2 million every every month until the, 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 the whole thing, uh, the whole contract was satisfied. So the, the Sort of is that uh, Interpol's intervention uh, brought uh, shame and uh, embarrassment to the Zimbabwean government because it, uh, it just uh, uh, smacked of uh, some money laundering, the whole, the whole affair. You, know, you remember that Stax uh, had only just uh, registered as a company in Hungary uh, two weeks prior to being paid $2 million US dollars. You know, that's why. Uh, bank staff uh, then called Interpol and then Interpol intervened uh, in the way they did. So uh, the money that we know for sure uh, pay is the two million. But of course, we uh, we have a in, in the other uh, amount, uh, amount of uh, nine hundred something was it actually paid or uh, oh yes, it was. Uh, oh yeah, I remember that one. It was. Um, uh, we, Established, it was established that uh, the, the drugs were overcharged for no drugs. And uh, then the ministry then uh, said they negotiated uh, with drugs to bring down the, uh, the, the, the invoice to some 500,000 from 900,000. They paid. So, in total. All right, uh, thank you so much. Uh, right, okay, go ahead. Thank you so much, um, Drew. Thank you so much, Mr. Maweda. I think uh, we just need to come back to, to the issue that we're really talking about. Because sometimes when, you, when we start labeling journalists as partisan or not, that's where we become, uh, we begin to have a problem. I think globally, if you look at uh, even uh, international media, one can tell that this particular media is, uh, you know, when it reports, it's, it's leaning more towards the left or the right and et cetera. But what we want to do is, um, should I be attacked as a journalist for having a certain perspective? Should journalists not have a perspective? Do Should journalists not have a perspective? I think that if uh, you don't have a perspective, you, probably don't, have, you don't deserve to be used. Um, I think we need uh, uh, journalism. What is it without... Uh, reflecting what the journalist is feeling, is experiencing and seeing every day with their, with their eyes. So uh, perspective 
others want us not to have a perspective, others want us to just repeat things like uh, all our problems are caused by assumptions, uh, that sort of stuff. I believe that uh, will, will maybe make us uh, less partisan. But we can see what the problem is, and it's not sanctions. So uh, is, that, uh, is that wrong to have that perspective? Am I, um, and, and, well, if, if we, we had a, a government that was uh, uh, doing uh, things that we expect from a normal government, uh, where people, activists, are not grabbed from their houses at night, where people are not, uh, where the court system is not weaponized against uh, uh, government critics, um, perhaps uh, we can start moving towards um, uh, this so-called uh, non-partisan stance. But otherwise, at the moment, uh, I think uh, um, I would rather, I would rather be dead than pretend that I can't see what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah, still I, I, I just need to, to understand because these these are the issues that we are making a, a clarion call against. Should I be targeted as a journalist? Should I feel threatened because I've written something? See, because this is this is this is the broader aspect that we want to address and that that we're trying to talk about right now. Because surely above all is said and done, journalism can never be criminalized. Journalism is not a crime. That's 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 our clarion call. All we are simply saying is, the moment you hit the publish button, should you feel afraid that uh, there's going to be a third or a fourth force that's going to come to you after you do a constitutionally enshrined or protected job? Because yeah. this is within our constitution. Yeah. Uh, Section 62 of the constitution allows each and every journalist here in Zimbabwe to practice journalism and we should be able to do this without fear or favor. We are going to be taking a short break. We are going to be back after this uh, short little message and then we are, we are going to come back and then we have more conversation around this issue where we are saying journalism is not a crime. This is the uh, we, we're going to be getting into the second half of, uh, of this segment, second and last segment. Of course, uh, to all those viewers who are watching us live right now, we do have uh, Mr. Dudus Matutu who is joining us uh, live uh, from, from, uh, from, from, from online you? platform. And also, yeah, from wherever he is, I like that <laughs> one. And also, we do have uh, Mr. Mtunga Maweri joining us as well as part of the panelists uh, from South Africa. We are taking a short break. We'll be back just after this. A uh, message.